Welcome to the challenge, my friends. Come on, I know you are online. Why is it always me doing the challenges lately? I'm asking the same. Because your partners will have better reaction than you. You sure? Akira is not exactly known for some wild reactions. Mori is known for very wild reactions. But only if you provoke him, no? And what am I doing during the challenges? Right, yeah. You don't even know what the challenge is about. But it's you who came up with it. We know what to expect already. Hey! But why us? Yeah, there aren't even the usual challenge participants. I just decided to go a bit smaller scale this time, that's all. Anyway, back to the point. Your challenge will be to eat less than usual. If you are able to stop eating completely, that's even better. Um, I can't not eat the whole day. I need to function. Yeah, same. I already give out a lot of energy at work. I need to get it back. I don't want to be cranky on the kids. You don't have to fast the whole day. Just don't eat in front of your partner and make it seem like you haven't even at work. I don't know about this. It reminds me of that stupid heart prank. And I don't want to worry Nobu again. Oh, don't even remind me. And what if we don't get any reaction? You think Unimi won't notice? I don't know. He usually doesn't pay attention to things like this. I think you are being unfair to him. He's super attentive when it comes to you. Agreed, and I don't even know you that well. But he has a point. Genji's mind is in the hospital lately, even at home. I don't think he will notice I didn't eat my lunch. And Mori will get upset if I don't eat his food, for sure. Hey, you can't know until you try. So, who's in? How long are we keeping up the act? Until your partner notices. I'll starve. No, you won't. I told you, you can eat when your partner doesn't see you. You'll just have to be sneaky. Fine. I guess I can try. Pray for my legs. And my stomach. This won't end well. Are we really doing this? I suppose. It will be fine. Alright, go ahead then. Enjoy. Unable to fall asleep, Zemi rolled around for about the hundredth time that night, thinking about what exactly he signed up for. They both had work tomorrow, so there was only a little option for Shirabu to notice something was different. The only good time would be dinner then. However, one meal most definitely wouldn't be enough to alert Shirabu, and he had to come up with something else. Like leaving the bento box Shirabu always made for him uneaten this time. What a waste. He groaned and then paused when Shirabu stirred next to him, murmuring a few words before cracking his eyes open. Later. Smiling, Sammy caressed his cheek. Yeah, I'm sorry, did I wake you up? Shirabu shook his head and snuggled into Sammy's arms, the soft caramel hair tickling Sammy's skin. Why aren't you sleeping? I was just thinking. Nothing important, no worries. Despite his words, Shirabu looked anything but calm when he looked at him, his grip around him tightening. How can it not be important when you can't sleep because of it? With a soft sigh, Sami pressed a kiss to Shirabu's forehead, rubbing small circles into his side. If nothing else, Shirabu was very attentive to his sleeping schedule since the last hospital trip. He found it sweet, and his heart always swelled when he noticed his boyfriend sadly making sure he got enough sleep. Of course, he knew Shirabu was deep down incredibly caring person, 
which only made him feel more guilty about the challenge. Ada? He snapped out of his thoughts, finding Shirabu looking at him with concern. He pulled him closer, nuzzling into his hair. Seriously, don't worry about it. I'll deal with it tomorrow and everything will be fine. Alright. But remember, you promised you'll tell me if something is wrong. Sam smiled. I know. He stared at the beautiful maid and tasty looking bento in front of him, disgruntled to the highest level. To keep up his act, he skipped breakfast that morning, buying something to eat in the convenience store along the way to his office. He thought the most difficult would be dinner, but the longer he stared at his supposed to be lunch, the more his resolve crumbled. At least I don't have to throw it away. I just have to wait until the challenge is over. He returned the bento into the fridge. A plan on how to make it look like he hadn't eaten the whole day already formed in his mind. Now he just had to wait and hope Shirabu would notice quickly so he could eat everything his boyfriend prepared for him. Hopefully it's not going to take more than one day. Later in the evening when he got home, he closed himself in his music room, leaving the bento on the kitchen counter for now so it looked like he forgot it there. It wasn't any particularly smart plan, counting mostly on Shirabu being tired enough from work that his brain wouldn't connect the necessary dots, but it was worth a try. Or maybe it's going to be better if he doesn't jump on that. Would make things easier. He opted to continue on the new melody he had been working on for the last several days. It was a personal song, one of those that belonged to him and Shirabu only. If he could humbly judge, it was one of the best he had composed so far. Even the kittens, now nested comfortably next to him in one of their many pet beds, seemed to think so if their soft purring was anything to go by. He dove so deep into composing, he noticed something changed only when someone knocked on the door. Yes? Can I come in? Sam's heart ached at the uncertainty light in Shirabu's voice. Ever since the messed up Valentine's Day, he made sure to keep his emotions in check when Shirabu happened to come in when he was working, though it seemed like Shirabu still wasn't comfortable with even just knocking. Of course, it's unlocked. Shirabu hesitantly entered the room and immediately bent down to pet the kittens that rushed to welcome him home. Only then he looked up to meet Sammy's eyes. You haven't eaten your lunch today. He said it so matter-of-factly it almost choked Sammy. He managed to keep an even expression and ran his fingers over the strings. I wasn't hungry. Silence settled in the room. Oh. Well, I'm going to heat up dinner now. Do you... you should get some. I'm not really hungry now either. I think I'll pass. The silence stretched. Until... Alright. Sammy's eyes showed up, warning bells ringing in his head upon hearing Shirabu's defeated tone. Are you okay? Shaking his head, Shirabu gave him a smile so forced it cracked his heart. I'm fine. I'll... You can come later if... if you want. Genji, wait. He bought it after Shirabu from the room and turned him to face him, his chest constricting when he saw Shirabu's broken expression. What's wrong, love? Nothing. I just... Kenji, you are never like this. You can tell me. I'll help if I can, I promise. 
Do you not like my cooking anymore? Of course I do. Why would you ask that? Shirabu's eyes closed over. Then why... Why don't you want to eat what I made? You've always... If I messed up, tell me. I'll do better next time, I promise. Just give it another shot. Please, don't. Semi crushed him in his arms before he could finish, his throat tightening when he felt him trembling. Stop, please. I'm sorry, it was just a stupid challenge. It has nothing to do with your cooking, I swear. Please don't cry. You didn't do anything wrong. The soft sniffles by his ear tore his heart apart. I'm sorry. I messed up so many things today. I missed the checkup call. Almost gave one patient the wrong meds. I lost records of another. I for forgot to tell the doctor about new patient. I got yelled at the whole day. I, I was so out of it today. And it, I thought you don't. Semi brought him closer, inwardly kicking himself for the horrible timing as Shirabu continued to cry into his shoulder. It's all good now. You'll get rest and you'll be ready to smash it at work tomorrow again. You'll see. I'm so sorry about the challenge. I wouldn't do it if I knew you had a shitty day. Come sit down now. I'll bring you something, okay? He set Shirabu on the couch and threw one of their fluffy blankets over his shoulders before he rushed to the kitchen, returning with snacks, drinks and both kittens. He then snuggled to Shirabu's side and hugged him firmly. It's all good now. Looking back at his messages, Kindachi felt bad for basically calling Kunime inattente. Despite being an epitome of laziness sometimes, his fiancé was more caring than most people he had met in his life. However, he wasn't necessarily the type of person to notice odd behavior. Still, he came to a conclusion it was worth a try. Worst case scenario, he was about to face Kunime's silent wrath for a few minutes, maybe an hour. He could deal with that. The only issue he faced was the fact they were both home that day, making it more challenging to sneak some food into his stomach to stop it from grumbling. And so he decided to go with, in his opinion, milder version of the challenge. He dug in his breakfast, spending more time pushing the pieces around than eating, and waited. I hope he notices soon, it's hard to resist. However, Kunime's mind seemed to be elsewhere the whole morning. He quickly swallowed everything and rushed back to his computer, much to Kindachi's confusion. The heck? He shrugged and cleaned both plates before he settled by the TV to finally relax after the exhausting week. The sound managed to somewhat silence the nagging voice in his head telling him that maybe Kunime didn't care after all, the stupid shows helping him to turn his brain off. As it turned out, the voice may have not been so far from the truth. To let Kunime work in peace, Kindaichi took it upon himself to cook lunch that day. It didn't come out half bad if he could judge, and he actually managed not to burn anything, which was a small miracle. In the spirit of the challenge, he only prepared a meal for Kunime, hoping that would be enough to alert his fiancé that something was wrong. He paused in front of the door with the plate in his hand before gently knocking on the wood. Okay, lunch is ready. Can I come in? Kunime looked up when he entered, apparently surprised. Oh, it's that late already? I didn't even notice. Kindaichi smiled half-heartedly and put the plate on the desk well aware of Kunime's curious gaze lingering on him. 
See, you are lucky to have me. He bit the inside of his cheek. Take a break for a while and eat slowly. It's not good for your health to just gobble everything. I guess... Where's your lunch? We could eat together by the table. Hindaichi paused, nervously twitching his fingers. I'm not hungry right now, so I thought I would bring the food to you instead. You wouldn't want me to stare at you the whole time at the table, right? Kunimi's brow scrunched in confusion as he watched Kindaichi for a moment longer before he nodded and pulled the plate closer. Alright, I'll bring the plate back when I'm done. That's it? He cleared his throat and flashed him a quick smile he really hoped was as forced as he imagined. Alright, don't work and eat at the same time, okay? He didn't wait for Kunime's answer and closed the door behind him, taking a deep breath. I knew this isn't going to end well. He scrolled on his phone to kill time while he quickly devoured a few bites of a protein bar, feeling a stink of jealousy over the other people's partner's reactions before he caught himself. Don't be like this, it's not Aki's fault. He has a lot of work now. Of course he's not noticing small things. You just have a bad timing. Okay, well, let's keep going until evening and end it if he still doesn't notice. It's not worth to push it more. Dinner was quiet. Too quiet for Kindaichi's liking. About an hour ago, Kunime came to him to suggest they cook dinner together, which Kindaichi hesitantly accepted, the only thing keeping him from showing the enthusiasm he felt being the stupid challenge. Kunime didn't say anything about the lunch for which Kindaichi couldn't really blame him, though he would lie if he said he wasn't a tad disappointed. But cooking together raised his spirits back up. He just regretted he probably wouldn't get to eat even a piece of it. Once again, he pushed the pieces of meat and vegetables around his plate while trying to look as out of it as possible. He felt Kunyumi's eyes on him from time to time, but that was it. No comment, no question, nothing. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I expected this, didn't I? But it still stung. You? He looked up, finding Kunime looking at him with an expression he hadn't seen on his face before. Are you feeling well? You haven't eaten anything yet, is it... is it not good? Kindaichi sighed. No, I'm sure it's great like everything you cook. I'm just not hungry. You said that with lunch too. Did you even eat anything since then? I didn't feel like it. Squeezing the chopsticks in his hand, Kunime averted his gaze the sight raising warning bells in Kindaichi's mind. You would tell me if something was wrong, right? Yeah. Then why aren't you saying anything now? Why don't you tell me what's wrong? But there's nothing wrong, really, I... You, please. I know you think I didn't notice, but I did. I know you haven't eaten anything today. At least not with me. Kindaichi paused, not liking where this was going at all. What are you talking about? That doesn't have to do anything with it. He could see Kunime pressing his lips together and immediately dropped chopsticks to rush to his fiancé's side. He knew this expression too well, and things were about to get bad real fast. Stop, stop, stop. Don't think that way, please. Then what... what's wrong? 
I wanted... I thought if we do something together, it... It could... Kindachi didn't wait for anything and squeezed him in his arms. Stop, please. I'm sorry, it was just a challenge. Nothing more. A challenge? Yes, so please stop that train of thoughts you are riding right now. You did nothing wrong. I like cooking together. It's nice and we should do it more often. Kinyame pulled away a bit. His eyes filled with yet unspilled tears. Don't say that just... just because of this. If... if you don't... Lucky, I wouldn't lie to you about this. I swear it was just a challenge. It's not your fault. Sniffing, Kunyame hid his face in his shoulder again. Kindaichi pulled him closer, already planning a nice date to make it up to him. He could do that at least. Yaba shivered under the intense gaze of his fiancé's amber eyes, watching him like a hawk from the other side of the room. He started the challenge early in the morning when he rushed to his job without stopping for even a bite of breakfast Kyotani prepared for them, and somehow managed to hold all the way to dinner. He felt absolutely awful when he saw the confused and slightly hurt look in Kyotani's eyes in the morning. His fiancé wasn't cooking often, but when he did, it was worth it. And now he had to miss out on it. Twice. Damn this challenge, seriously. At least he didn't have to feel too bad about missing dinner since he was in charge of that. But the concerned looks Kyotani kept sending him made his chest constrict with guilt. If only Kyotani said something. He could end the whole circus and focus on having a nice meal with his beloved. Just hold on for a bit longer. Surely he won't be able to stay silent about it for long. And then everything will be fine again. He sighed and returned to minding the pots and pans, trying to ignore the ice burning a hole through his back. Just a little longer... He yelped when the familiar strong arms wrapped around him from behind, his heart jumping into his throat. The grip around his waist loosened immediately. Sorry, sorry, I shouldn't do this, I know. Letting out a shaky breath, Yaba shook his head, trying to collect himself a bit. It's... it's fine. I just didn't expect it. I know, that's what I'm talking about. I should have warned you beforehand. He nuzzled into the crook of Yehaba's neck. I'm sorry, love. I'll be more careful next time. Yehaba sighed and reached behind him to ruffle Kyotani's short hair. The blonde looked like a scolded puppy, and Yehaba couldn't help the small smile curling his lips. Don't worry about it. Happens. I doubt you were sneaking up on me on purpose. I'm not doing that anymore. Right. But you wanted something, didn't you? What is it? He waited when Kyotani stayed silent for a while, covering his hand with his own. After all the years they were together, he learned to recognize when Kyotani hesitated before asking something difficult and knew he couldn't rush him in those moments. Why didn't you eat breakfast today? Yaba wasn't sure if he should be relieved or worried that the question finally came. I was late for work, so I didn't have time to stop. You weren't late. You went out even earlier than usual. Well, there was an emergency, so I had to go earlier. Emergency? In a gymnasium? He let go of Yahaba and stepped back. 
Why don't you tell me the truth? Is it something I shouldn't know about? No, no, it's nothing like that. I just... He bit his lip, his mind racing. He didn't mean to tangle himself into the story so much. But in the end, it wasn't bad guy than I saw through his lies. Though it could go wrong real fast. And judging by Kyotani's face and posture, the direction of his thoughts wasn't a good one. Then why don't you tell me what's happening? If my cooking sucks, then tell me. I'll try better next time. Or if it's something else I did and you're mad, then tell me too so I can do something about it. He clenched his jaw. The nervous clenching of his fists hurting Yahaba in a way he never thought possible. I know I'm still a work in progress when it comes to relationships, even after so long. But I'm trying, I swear. I just can't read everything and the uncertainty is killing me. So if I did something to upset you, then... Before he could finish, Yahaba squeezed him in a tight embrace. Guilt jabbing in his chest. Stop, please. Don't say things like this. I'm not upset, I swear. I'm sorry, this was a terrible idea. He should have known the challenge wouldn't end well. He hoped he managed to erase this mindset from Kyotani's mind throughout the years of being together. But apparently it was naive of him to think that. How could he call himself a good, worthy partner if he couldn't even recognize when his fiancé's insecurities were acting up? Especially since he was the cause of it. I'm so sorry, dear. I didn't want this to happen. It was just a stupid challenge. I didn't want this, I swear. I was supposed to eat less and wait for your reaction. But I would never do it if I knew it would bring up those thoughts again. Trust me, please. After a moment of silence, Kyotane sighed deeply and returned the hug, nuzzling back into Yahba's neck. It's fine. No, it's not. I know I shouldn't do challenges like this, but I still went along even when... Can... Can you forgive me? Tightening his embrace a bit, Kyotane kissed his temple. There's nothing to forgive. But please, don't scare me like this again. I was worried sick about you. I'm sorry. I promise I won't accept any challenges like this. And your cooking doesn't suck, okay? It's great and I felt horrible for skipping it. You... do you mean that? Yeah. I love it when you make food for me. He pulled away a bit to bring their lips together, leaving their foreheads touching afterwards. You are the most caring person I know. We might have had some bumps along the way, but please remember that I wouldn't be with you if I didn't think you are the best man in the world. He didn't have to look to know Kyotani's cheeks were red now. But that was fine. As long as Kyotani focused on the compliments and not his self-deprecating thoughts, everything was fine. 